I've been using the Quiet Comfort line for about 20 years now, and specifically the new Quiet Comfort for over half a year. I think it's a very incremental upgrade over the QC45s, much like the QC35 to QC35 Mark II refresh. Let's explore the changes and see which model is right for you. I'll also share some tips later that I've discovered in my long-term ownership that might be useful to you. Now in terms of a design aesthetic, the only actual change between the QC45 and the new Quiet Comfort is really the logo, where it's kind of a silver to now an embossed white color over, or depending on the model, it'll change color. But they've also added two new colors. So there's a green color and a blue color, like a light blue. And the only other physical change is the inline remote now has a built-in microphone, whereas the QC45 did not have it. In terms of the software, the Bose Music app now has an option to kind of customize this action button here to exactly what you would like. And you can set different profiles for that. So for example, I use it for the commute feature, which has a windscreen block, whereas the old model here, the QC45, didn't have that option. So I live in a really windy city, and these were borderline unusable on windy days. But the wind block technology on the new Quiet Comfort works super well, and I love it because I bike a lot, and it's just useful to have. I made a whole short about it, but I think Bose has been a little disingenuous with the upgrade because the action button mapping is something that could have happened on the QC45, and that's something I actually talked to them about. Uh, like I reached out to their, their support team and told them this was a feature you had on the QC35 Mark II, like the wind block, you got rid of it, and it's just a software push update. But even the battery life, there's a two hour difference rated battery life, which they changed. This was marketed as 24 hours. And now you can see they've changed it to 22 hours. So a little disingenuous because I think they're trying to get people to upgrade, but there really isn't much that's upgraded here. The sound signature has changed on the new Quiet Comfort from the QC45s. They have the same 40 millimeter drivers and also Bluetooth 5.1. You've probably heard the saying, no highs, no lows, it must be Bose. Well, that is actually not the case here anymore. They've kind of completely changed their sound signature and it has really pronunciated bass. There's also a lot of pronunciated highs here. Bose doesn't really give their frequency response charts, but the sound guys did a quick comparison of the two of them. And this has a much higher fall off at the peak end. So that statement is no longer really relevant. This is like the opposite of what Bose has been known for. But in the app, you are able to tweak things decently. If you want the new Quiet Comfort to sound like the QC45, you can easily just do a treble boost and that will bring them a little bit closer to each other. If you are new to this market and you want something, then yes, the Quiet Comfort is certainly a better buy. But if you have the QC45s, it is not worth the upgrade. I personally upgraded because of the windscreen feature and I review these, so for me it makes sense. But if you have the QC45s, there's probably no reason to upgrade in my opinion. Also, if you're watching like action movies, a bass reducer is actually probably good. It's like explosions and things will sound actually pretty loud, almost to the point where they might be jarring. So just a tip there. The active noise cancellation on these is pretty incredible. It reduces about 80 to 90% of surrounding noises and is just very good. It is unchanged from the QC45 though. There's not too much to say about these. Uh, if you go into a Best Buy, you can actually try them on in the demo unit and just kind of see how good the ANC is. One interesting thing is that I actually really like having aftermarket pads. So I did a very non-scientific test, but I had one of the Bose pads on the right and one of these aftermarket pads on the left. And when I put them on, I had some white noise going and you know turning this way, that way you could definitely notice a slight difference in the active noise cancellation performance. And I think that just really comes down to the quality of the foam they're using here. So just FYI, if you decide to do that, uh, I personally really like customizing them. And I think it's kind of a nice option that you, that you can retrofit 
older ones to this, but you should know that it might take a tiny bit of a hit in the ANC performance. I'll put a link to all these pads and accessories I'm talking about if you'd like to check them out. The new Quiet Comforts are on sale for 100 bucks right now, so 249, which is really good. I will also link these. If you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is purchasing through those links. It costs you nothing, but does kick back to the channel if you found this helpful. So now I wanna get a little bit into a microphone test between the built-in microphones and the inline microphone here, just for a little comparison. All right, so here's a quick audio test on the QC45s wirelessly. I'm currently recording on my phone on the high quality setting. So this should give you a little test of the microphone here. All right, and now I have a uh, rain white noise at 50%. So I wanna see if that picks up on the microphones here. All right, now this is a test with the new built-in wired mic. And you should hear, because it's close to my mouth, should sound a little bit better, hopefully. And it's a direct connection. Also, I do not have the headphones powered on right now. So let's power them on, see if there's any difference. Now let's uh, put a little white noise in the background. Same rain. See if it makes any difference. So yeah, here's a mic test. I'll move it around a little so you can hear. But yeah, this is probably good for people that um, are turning this uh, off right now. It's probably good for people that are working remotely now. Looking at the competition within Bose itself, the QC Ultras are actually on a Snapdragon sound platform, which has higher bit rates and better codec support for high quality audio. So if sound quality is really your preference, then the QC Ultra probably makes more sense. Just know you are gonna pay more for that. And there are features on it that are a little gimmicky, like the immersive audio. There's also a more premium metal band on it. I actually tried the Ultra and returned it because I'm not a fan of um, capacitive sliding buttons on headphones. I like these physical tactile controls because I do live in a place where it's cold six months out of the year. And with gloves, you really can't use those accurately. If you're new to noise canceling headphones and the Bose lineup, then the new Quiet Comfort is certainly a great purchase. In about a month, it's probably for sure gonna go on sale on Prime Day. And just generally right now it's on sale. So that is a great purchase, I'd say. But if you own the QC45 already, it's really not worth the upgrade in my opinion. If you'd like to see my full review on the QC45s, I'll put that right here for you. Thanks for watching.